Ayan. Moluen. Apshin. Nda. Khuemore. We are about to start. I am going to request any of you who needs this gadget to raise your hand so that if you don't want to listen in English, you can listen to in any other language that you want. Osa watu utwa kashoa, pamisa leto ba ofentwe otla utwa kasi zulu le kasi soto le kasi kosa kasi venda kasi tonga ka Afrikans. Msomo le kasi otital. Maybe the sign language. So just raise your hand if you need this. And then do us a favor. Our fetsa we bereki sara kwala meeting sata magayo. It's not an early Christmas present. We share more. Just raise your hand, just raise your hand until we gray. Off it's a we gray or can we see a little yeah, little late, just raise your hand until we're done. Hello, Mr. Chairman. Good Kaya.
You see, if you don't raise your hand, Bazong Jul, Mabakatung Jula Besuya complainers, Funukali meeting, Uloga Hamba, Lucisia Niges. I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this meeting. And thank you so much for sacrificing your time to be here. We know there are a number of things that could be doing right now, but you decided to be part of history. You decided to come here and raise your views in order for government to be able to amend Section 25 of the Constitution according to your inputs. As a committee, we are going to listen to you. We are not going to tell you what to say. We are not going to tell you what not to say. 
All we ask from you, especially those that want to speak in this meeting today, please make sure that you have written your points on something, whether on a phone, on a piece of paper, so that when you get a chance to speak and you are given for argument's sake 30 minutes, you are able to use your 30 minutes to maximum. But if you don't write anything and you are given a chance to speak, let me tell you, some of us here, first time we see ourselves on the screens, they are intimidating in this thing. You are going to be standing there and seeing yourself on the screen and get excited. You want them to take your picture because you are on TV and you forgot what you wanted to say. And when he tell you that, thank you so much, please sit down, your time is up, you will think you are very rude. Kanti, if you have written your points down, you are able to stand up and say, my name is Bones Mudise, I am from what, 15 in Ferenacheng, I only have six points. Point number one, because they are there, you just read it. Point number two, point number three, done, six minutes, everyone is listening to you, you have made your issues across and you sit down, very nice. Because believe you me, there is nothing hateful as being told that your time is up, please sit down. In front of all these people. And you want to be stubborn and they tell you, they help us to tell you to sit down. And because some of us know some of you here, will even tell your friend to tell you to sit down. So the meeting is starting. Once again, you are more than welcome. I want to take this opportunity so we know who's here. On my extreme left, it's Ntate Diyakha. Ntate Diyakha, please stand and just wave so they know you are here. Ah, oh, Wamna, stand. Yeah, stand. Thank you, thank you. Next to Ntate Diyakha is Ntate Hoffman. Ntate Hoffman? Next one, Tate Hoffman, it's Memocheti. Memocheti. Next one, Memocheti, and next one, next one, Memocheti is Memnube. Memnube. Next one, Memnube is Memasilela. And then next to me, Masilela, it's Me Njokwe. And next to Me Njokwe, it's Me Tong. The meeting is started. I am told that there are some very important people in the meeting, Kai. Okay? Okay, they are from Mfuleni local municipality, I assume. Uh, Councillor Shope, please stand up. introduce a constituency alone. Yeah, we're introducing you to your own constituents. Councillor Chavalala. Councillor Senegal. Hey, Councillor Senegal, you are very rich. You've got the whole town named after you. <laughs> Councillor Sanyani. I'm told that this is your ward where we are. So you are our host. Thank you very much, Councillor Sanyani. Councillor Mullo, is it Dedi Mullo? Ivan, you are here. Where are you? <laughs> Show Brad Eddie. Councillor Fenter. Oh, there she is next to Ntate Mullo there. Councillor Mavimbela. Councillor Tsoteti. Councillor Damon. Councillor Tim Kulu, Councillor M Chavalala. Thank you. And then from City Bank District, we've got Councillor Gomez. 
There you are. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope there's no one, there's no councillor that we did not note. There are two councillors that we did not note, Kaya, in the meantime. Oh, councillor van der Lith. There, there. Ah, Menier, who can it? And can councillor Sebran. That's it, that's it, Menier. Any other councillor that is here? Okay, Kaya, now nah, we have a one and as and uh, it. <clears throat> as we start our meeting, we are declaring the Ferenagen City. Hall as a precinct of the Houghton Provincial Legislature. I, Honorable Chairperson of Infrastructure Development and Property Management Portfolio Committee in the Legislature, hereby declare Ferenagen City Hall as the precinct of Houghton Provincial Legislature for the 10th May 2023. This is in terms of Rule 56, subsection 1 and 2 of the standing rules of the Houghton Provincial Legislature. This, the standing rules of the legislature will apply and govern all the engagements today. I thank you. What does that mean? It means there will be no one who's going to be disorderly here. There is no one who's going to disrespect anyone here. And there is no one who's going to insult nor physically engage with anyone. Meaning, there is a service from South African Police Service outside. The moment we feel and believe that you are a threat to this meeting, you are a threat to the participants, we just call them to arrest you. In a nutshell, how about our fellow today, this hall, it's a national key point. You are very important today. No one will ever do anything to you. We are not a little bodyguard today. So enjoy the next four or five hours when we are together. Thank you so much. Uh, we are going to receive presentation. I'm sure you've got the agenda with you. The presentations that we are going to receive. We are going to receive a presentation from the NCOP and Legal Service Unit. The legal framework of why we are here today. Immediately after Bona we are then receiving a presentation from the National Department of Public Works. Then we hand it over to you, those who want to speak, those who want to make inputs. Our request, as you make your inputs, please help us. Let your inputs be a solution-driven inputs. Let it not be focused mainly on problems. We know our problems. We are here to receive inputs from you in relation to Section 25 of the Constitution. Land expropriation. Do we, do we expropriate without compensation or do we enter into a deal with the landowner so that majority of the people can have access to land? Because we all know land is dignity. With land, you can do so many things. So we need you to tell us as government to say we believe the following points will assist you in order to help resolve the issue of land so that we minimize number of things that related to land. So I'm sure the legal unit is ready with the presentation. Where are you doing it from? Ozage. They, I'm told that the copies you have them with you of the presentation that are going to be made. They will also be projected on the screens. So if you don't want to read from the copy, you can just watch there on the TV. What they are saying will be projected there. While she's setting up, let's welcome from the Midval local municipality, Kansela Nkwe, where are you? There she is. Yes, yes, very energetic. Kansela Kodisang, where are you? Eva, you do scheme. And then from City Bank Municipality, you've got Council MCB. Where are you? There you are. And then from Mfulini, that's Councilor from Mfulini. It's Councilor Ramungalo. Councilor Ramungalo. 
There you are. Thank you so much, councillors. You are all welcome. And I hope with your presence here, your constituency will be able to assist the meeting in making positive deliberations. We now hand over to the Legal Service Unit of the Houghton Provincial Legislature on behalf of the NCOP to engage with you on the legal frameworks. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable Chairperson. Um, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, and good morning, Honorable Members and um, colleagues and members of, of the community and stakeholders. Um, as Chairperson has already indicated, um, I am from the NCOP and Legal Services Unit. My name is Winning Gubane Sambo, and I will just be uh, presenting a very short um, you know, slide presentation. And the purpose of this presentation is really to take you into confidence as to the process that unfolds when we are processing a Section 76 bill. And in this matter, in this instance, it would be the expropriation bill B23B of 2020. So a lot of stakeholders have always come to us and asked, you know, and worried about whether their submissions are actually taken into account during this process. You know, how do we go about actually considering um, their submissions, if they at all they are considered? And um, you know, um, I, this presentation, the purpose of this presentation is to really allay your concerns and to really be transparent with you about you know, how we process a Section 76 bill, uh, how your submissions are going to be considered, because they will be considered and taken into account uh, by the committee, and, and what happens thereafter. So please bear with me. It's a very short presentation, and I will skip um, a couple of slides, because I think a lot of the information here is already common cause, so I'll just gloss over. Uh, some of the information that I think is already common cause to stakeholders. So the structure of the presentation is divided into two parts. Part one is the introduction, is the introduction and then part two is the processing uh, of a section 76 bill in the, in the GPL. And that is the most important part that I want to dwell on. Um, so the introductory phase, it just basically um, outlines what the what the legislature is, um, you know, as one of the three arms of states, um, and 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 basically also outlines, you know, its 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 mandates. One of which is lawmaking, which is why we are here. Um, uh, so I think that a lot of uh, stakeholders would already be au okay fait with this particular, you know, um, um, information. Um, even with the lawmaking powers of the legislature, you know, we've looked at section 104 of the Constitution as well as section 114 of the Constitution, which basically just outlines the lawmaking powers of the legislature to say we have authority to actually be considering this bill in the first place. Um, and then I wanted to just highlight the types of bills and also just place into context where the section 76 bill fits in. Um, so we have 
a lot of bills and one of those some of those are you know your section 74 bills your section uh, 75 bills which are bills ordinary bills not affecting provinces and then you have your section 76 bills and that's the one the bills uh, the category of bills that have been highlighted in red and that is where um, the expropriation bill fits in. And these are ordinary bills affecting provinces. And that is why we're having the stakeholder engagement, this public hearing, because um, it has come from national, um, from national parliament to us so that we can solicit the views of the people of Gauteng, being a section 76 bill. So I just wanted to highlight that. And moving on to the most important part, I think that's, this is the most um, relevant part that you will find. And this section is just a, a flow diagram um, highlighting or um, yeah just basically highlighting the flow of, of, of procedures or processes that are involved when we are processing this particular bill. Now we all start we, we start at the um, the National Parliament NCOP that's the National Council of Provinces which informally refers a bill uh, to all provincial legislatures every province has a provincial legislature. Um, before the bill has been tabled or introduced. Now, when, when this NCOP um, it does this, it's just basically to say, hey, provincial legislatures, we have this bill coming up. Get ready, get ready. Uh, you can start looking up um, on it, reading up on it. It hasn't been formally referred for consideration yet. So um, that's the first stage. Then the speaker of each provincial legislature will also informally refer the bill to the relevant committee um, and relevant MEC for information and planning. So in this case, the bill would have been informally referred to this particular um, committee um, for information and planning. And once the bill has been introduced or tabled in the NCOP, um, the NCOP will then now say, um, informally refer the bill to provincial legislatures. And this is important because um, this phase, we will, the, the NCOP will provide time frames to process the bill. So um, those time, frame, time frames are very important when it comes to also us developing our own uh, program when we are processing the bills because our time frames are informed by the time frames of the NCOP. Um, so it's very important. Then the speaker will formally refer it to the relevant committee and MEC for processing. So that is why this bill is, per, is particularly uh, here before this committee. It has been formally referred uh, by the speaker. Um, the committee then will um, prepare a plan on how to process the bill, including time frames. These are the time frames that I've already alluded to. Um, and in processing this bill, what do we mean when we say the committee is processing the bill? So it's 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 a multifaceted um, it's a multifaceted um, program, which include a briefing by the department um, and NCOP special delegates. So the national department would come and brief the committee um, uh, on the detail, just basically the substantive detail of the bill. What is the bill about? What does it seeks to do? Um, you know. Um, and, and all of those, um, you know, those, those details to really put the uh, committee into, co place the committee into confidence and, um, you know, for it, and also just to be, make sure that the committee is ready uh, to come before you and meaningfully engage with the bill. Um, and then they will, the, the, the committee will also receive a legal opinion. Uh, that's basically, um, the view uh, on the constitutional and legislative um, implications on, on the particular bill. So its constitutionality, does, does is the bill constitutional? Um, you know, what are the legal and um, constitutional implications of the bill? Then we'll receive, the committee will also receive a socioeconomic analysis um, of the bill. Um, and then it will also receive views of the provincial um, executive on the bill. So the committee really re receives a lot of, of views from different um, you know, professionals and stakeholders to really acquaint um, itself with the contents of the bill so that it can meaningfully engage with the bill and on the bill with you um, as uh, stakeholders. And then the blue part, that's the blue part, uh, the blue uh, square, is I think the most important really 
for our purposes, and that is where, exactly where we are right now, and it speaks to public participation. So once the committee has acquainted itself with the bill, it then moves on to the public participation phase. And this is where it solicits inputs from members of the public through written submissions or public hearings. That is why we are here, to solicit inputs from, um, from um, colleagues and from stakeholders on the bill. Then the next part, um, uh, once this particular you know, process is completed, the next part would be the negotiating mandate, um, indicating the parameters for negotiating and proposed amendments. So this phase is very important because this is where if you make relevant and meaningful inputs on the bill, your inputs may well find their way um, on the negotiating mandate. It's a document that we send through to the NCOP um, um, as, um, uh, committee uh, indicating what the view of Gauteng as a province is on this particular bill. And on that bill, uh, on that document, um, the committee sometimes usually outlines, um, you know, some of the relevant um, uh, inputs that it may have received from stakeholders. So I think I want to urge you that when you are making, um, you know, your, your, your inputs, just make sure that they are directly linked to the expropriation bill uh, so that that is how your inputs can meaningfully contribute to this entire process. So I wanted to just dwell on that for a bit. The next part um, is the final mandate. That is where the, the, NCO, uh, the committee will indicate um, as Gauteng whether we are voting in favor, against, or abstaining from voting on the bill. So that's actually you know, the, the voting process on the bill. Um, and then uh, the next part is NCOP then votes in plenary. Um, each province has one vote, and at least five provinces must vote uh, in favor of the bill to pass. So if the uh, NCOP does not ha uh, man manage to get five votes um, on this bill, then it won't pass. The next um, phase is the, uh, the National Assembly will then pass the bill, um, and then the bill is submitted to the president for assent, and it becomes an act if the president feels that it's fine and he is ready to um, assent to it and then assigned copies entrusted to the Constitutional Court for safekeeping. So this is, it's a very high level, um, you know, process of, you know, processing a bill um, in the legislature, but we thought that it would give you at least some idea of what it entails and where your submissions fit in. And that is the uh, end of my presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, honorable members and stakeholders for lending me your ear. Thank you. Thank you so much for the precise and straight to the point presentation. Can we invite the next presentation from the National Department of Public Works? Is it Minister Sitle Zigalala's office, ne? Oh, yeah. Uh, let's invite you. Uh, I hope we're able to follow and probably make addition to your comments that you are going to make as you receive this legal framework. Now that we have the legalities on the expropriation, we're getting to the gist now. What is this thing of expropriating of land? Mema Senegal, expropriation of land. Now we're getting to the gist of it. Yeah. Uh, you'll indicate when you are ready, sir. Technical, do you have it there? They are fine. I see you, Mr. Tumahole. Welcome. You are representing a very important sector. Yes, sir. You are ready when you are. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, members of the Portfolio Committee, and uh, public participants uh, present here. The presentation 
is going to be very precise. It will not touch on everything that is contained in the bill. It's just a, a high level presentation on the key aspects of the bill. Firstly, let me start by indicating that uh, the, my name, my name is Joe Lekala, my apologies, my name is Joe Lekala. I'm representing the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. As I've already indicated, uh, the presentation will be very precise and to the point. It will not touch on every aspect that is contained in the bill. I was about to indicate that uh, the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure is the executive authority responsible for the management of uh, the expropriation X63 of 1975. It is for this reason that uh, this bill originated from the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. The Expropriation Act of 1975 is currently law. It's, it's the current law of expropriation. The problem with it is that uh, it is law that was enacted before 1994. And naturally, when the Constitution came into operation, a lot of flaws were identified with the 1975 Expropriation Act. However, in the interim, whilst the current bill has not been passed into law. Courts have interpreted the 1975 expropriation law in harmony with the expropriation provisions of Section 25 of the Constitution. All of us know that uh, the Constitution of 1996 is the supreme law of the, of the land. So every law and conduct has to be consistent with the Constitution. Otherwise, it will be invalid. The Expropriation Bill B23 is purposefully developed to give effect to the pro property clause. Uh, the property clause is Section 25 of the 1996 Constitution. It serves, the property clause serves as the foundation for the substantive and procedural aspects of the bill, which is simultaneously aligned to the principles of the Constitution. So the bill that we, we are busy with, the bill that we are presenting to you this morning, addresses procedural and substantive issues that must be in line with the Constitution. In other words, it is trying to reflect the requirements of the Constitution. So one of the issues that this bill deals with is administrative and judicial expropriation. Uh, expropriation. In other words, when a decision is taken to expropriate, it must also be in line with administrative law because decisions that are taken by expropriating authorities to expropriate are administrative decisions. The only judicial expropriation that we are aware of at the moment is one that happens in terms of uh, the Land Reform Labor Tenants Act. We are saying it's a judicial expropriation because it is the court that authorizes that expropriation to take place. 
Now, when we say decisions to expropriate are administrative decisions, it means that they have to be to also be aligned to the promotion of Administrative Justice Act. And that means that those decisions must be procedurally fair and rational. In other words, when an expropriating authority, like a municipality, if a municipality takes a decision to expropriate you or to expropriate your property, that decision must be procedurally fair and rational. When we say rational, it must make sense. It must be connected to the purpose of that expropriation. You must also have an opportunity to make representation. You must have an opportunity to be heard when you are faced with a decision to expropriate. The decision must also be reasonable. In other words, it must take into account all relevant factors and consider all the interests of the affected persons before a, a, a decision can be reached. And decisions that are taken in terms of the expropriation law must be in terms of a law of general application. In other words, that law, like the law that we are presenting to you this morning, is not a law that is target, targeted only to persons of a particular race group or persons of a particular social background. It is a law that applies to everybody regardless of their background, regardless of uh, their origins or color. So that is what it means when we say a law is a law of general application. It applies to everybody across the board. It does not target particular sectors of the community. Now, this law, before it can be implemented, we have to be certain that uh, the reason for the expropriation is for a public purpose or a public interest. The flaw that is there with the current Expropriation Act of 1975 is that it only deals with the public purpose aspect. It does not deal with the public interest. So this bill addresses itself also to the public interest aspect. Now, when we talk about uh, public purpose, which is very broad also, public purpose relates to the day-to-day -day operations of government, the particular departments that comprises government when they implement laws to do certain functions, that is what we call a public purpose. For instance, when a school is built to provide education, the education is a public purpose. Health is a public purpose, and so forth. Um, so there are a myriad of uh, public purposes that are undertaken in terms of legislation. There is also the aspect of public interest that this bill addresses itself to. Now, the Constitution defines public interest very broad broadly. It says public interest includes the nation's commitment to uh, land reform and reforms to bring about equitable access to natural resources. So as you can see, it's very broad. Um, and that is the transformation aspect that uh, the Constitution and now this bill wants to achieve. And one of those issues would be land reform, would be water reforms, agricultural reforms, and so forth. 
I have already referred to expropriation, uh, expropriating authorities uh, that uh, possess the power to expropriate. There are many expropriating authorities across the three spheres of government. In the local sphere, it would be the different municipalities. In the provincial sphere of government, in the, ni uh, uh, the nine provinces that we have, or the nine provincial governments that we have, it would be government departments within a provincial um, uh, government that possess the authority to expropriate in terms of a specific uh, or a specific piece of legislation. In the national sphere of government, government departments also um, possess the power to expropriate in terms of uh, different uh, pieces of legislation. We have uh, state-owned enterprises and other uh, public entities that are not necessarily part of uh, the, uh, strictly speaking, government, uh, but which are public uh, authorities which also possess the power to expropriate. Now, clause three of the bill empowers the minister responsible for public works to expropriate for public works related purposes. So, the minister of public works and infrastructure as the uh, Exec uh, executing authority responsible for this act also has got or possesses specific powers to expropriate that are limited to the role of head or his department uh, in, in the national sphere of government. Now I will get into the aspect of uh, the process that is followed when we expropriate. I have already indicated to the public purpose and the public interest that uh, should be addressed before we expropriate a property. Now, there is a needs identification that must be done before an expropriation is undertaken. That is contained in clause five of the bill, which requires the expropriating authority to investigate the suitability of the property for the identified need. In other words, the rights and, uh, the rights and vesting that are attached to the identified property must be determined. When we talk about the rights and interests, we're talking about things like uh, ownership, servitudes, restitution claims, and other unregistered rights uh, that are not necessarily uh, ownership. Uh, we also have to look at uh, the rights and impacts inquiry to assess the suitability of the property for the intended uh, expropriation. Characteristics of the property are also relevant to assess suitability. So when we look at the characteristic of the property, we involve experts such as valuers to come and look at the property or any other experts, uh, if it's a specialized property, so that we have to be certain that uh, the property will meet the required need. During the investigation phase, the owner or occupier's privacy must also at all times be respected. They should be consulted to obtain information about the property and possible unregistered rights in the property. As I've already indicated, this is an administrative law process. It is not arbitrary. It is uh, strictly procedural. Uh, there has to be procedures that are followed. For instance, in the case of land, the municipality should also be engaged to establish things like zoning, property rates, and other charges and availability of services for that particular property that must be expropriate, uh, expropriated. Some of the properties that uh, could be subject to expropriation would be also be subject to things like uh, mortgage, uh, mortgage rights and persons affected by those uh, mortgages, for instance, like banks and so on, 
would also be consulted. Now the next issue, once the need identification has been done, would be to look at the intention to expropriate. Before a person affected by expropriation is served with a notice of intention to expropriate, we have to make sure that uh, the aspect of compensation is also addressed. The aspect of compensation is dealt with in terms of uh, Section 25. The standard is set out in Section 25 of the Constitution. Now, this is one of the flaws that is in the Expropriation Act of 1975 because that act is not aligned to the standard of compensation that, that is contained in the property clause of the, of the Constitution. It is for this reason that uh, we are amending that act to also reflect the standard of compensation that is reflected in the, in the Constitution. Um, there has been arguments uh, uh, from uh, a lot of people saying no, but compensation should be market, market value. But that is not what uh, the Constitution says. The Constitution identifies market value as just one of the elements that must be considered. But when you look at the standard of compensation in the Constitution, it is possible that when you deal with a particular case, you may award market value compensation. Some, comp uh, some cases you might actually not award any compensation at all. So each case will be treated on its own merits. It will be a matter that is dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. It is not a one-size-fits-all. So Clause 7 requires that uh, the notice of intention to expropriate must be served on everyone who has an interest in the property. So persons who have got an interest in the property would be, would be those with registered and those with unregistered rights. The notice of intention to expropriate is not an invitation to purchase because an expropriation is compulsory in nature and it is the only uh, uh, power that can be exercised by government. So when you are served with a notice to, to, to expropriate, notice of intention to expropriate, it is not an invitation to negotiate a bargain in the normal course, as you normally do when you, you're selling your property in the open market. Although the act, the, the bill still requires negotiations to take place, but it is negotiations of a different type. It is not negotiations as when you sell your property normally in the open market. Because the bill requires negotiations to take place, you must still be given an, a, an opportunity to agree to the offer of compensation. The offer of, of compensation can be anything from zero to, to a trillion. So it's on that scale. So, as long as we meet the standard of compensation, which is just an equitable compensation, we will be complying with uh, the requirements of the, the Constitution. Where there is no agreement reached, the bill requires us to follow mediation so that uh, as much as possible the affected party is accommodated. Mediation takes place in terms of clause 19 of the bill, 
and where mediation does not yield results, the court must decide the offer of just and equitable compensation. The next step after The next uh, step or major process in the expropriation, pro, uh, uh, the expropriation, the expropriation process is the notice of expropriation. Um, the the bill is is is, is uh, let me try to be just frank. The bill is a, a bit of a technical technical. Uh, a uh, 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 piece of legislation. Uh, I will try to, to explain some of the things in, 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 uh, in one of the African languages, but I must just indicate that uh, some of the processes, most of the processes that must unfold are of a technical nature, but I'll try my best to, to explain uh, mix, mix uh, in, in one of the languages as, as we go along. Uh, notice of expropriation takes place in terms of clause eight. Uh, notice of expropriation uh, I give you the appropriate weights, uh, weight to take but ho uh, ho uh, di di toto. ho topelwa di toto. ya ho topelwa di toto. So in terms of clause eight. Now, how kitsiso ewe ikirea? When you get that notice. Ownership passes on that particular moment. When you are served with that notice, how if you are kitsiso eo? Ownership, if it is to to government. Now the notice identifies the date and when the right to possession also passes. So. That's why it's technical because honali uh, ownership le possession. Possession is not physical. physical. Possession can be physical or non-physical. So ownership passes when the notice of expropriation is served, and possession can take place at that moment or it can take place later. The two can be together or can be separated. So when possession is delayed, it means the current owner of the property can continue to stay and use the property, but ownership would meanwhile have passed to the expropriating authority. Now, the, the effect of the passing of ownership is that the new owner, the expropriating authority, would have the authority or the power to register that property in their name. I've already indicated what possession is. I will not uh, uh, spend more time on that one. But one of the implications of the person remaining in possession of the property after ownership has passed is that that person who remains in possession of the property after being expropriated will still be responsible for the rates and charges and the maintenance of the property because you will be the one using the property. So obviously you must pay for the rates you must pay for 
for, for the maintenance of that property. Uh, I see people are shaking heads, but it's, it's common sense because uh, you'll be the one using that property for your own benefit. The expropriating authority must pay the compensation to the expropriated person before the date on which the right to possession passes. So, once you, are, you have been served with the notice to expropriate, you, you must also be compensated. Uh, it will be a matter of agreement between the parties who will be negotiating at that time. Uh, the next issue, which would be uh, probably the, the, the final item, would be the aspect of, uh, you know, how compensation uh, claims uh, takes place. <coughs> the compensation amount can be reduced by the court proportionally according to claims that come later. We have, we have, I've already indicated that there are persons who would be registered owners of the property. But at the same time, you might find that on the same property, there are people who have got other interests on the property. So those would be unregistered uh, persons who with unregistered rights on the property. So the compensation must be shared among people who have got rights to, to the property. If somehow the owner or persons with rights cannot be uh, identified, the property, the compensation would be deposited with the master of the high court. <coughs> there is an aspect also which is very important of agent expropriations. This takes place in terms of clause 20 of the bill and uh, it is just an emergency measure that may take place uh, sometimes where government requires to attend to a matter of uh, public interest. Uh, for instance, such as where there, uh, there is a, a disaster, a national disaster like COVID, for instance, uh, and any other disaster like uh, floods affecting a particular region or floods that probably uh, God forbid that may befall our entire country. When that happens, uh, government must be seen to be taking action. And the only way to enable government to take action would, amongst other measures, be to expropriate agently. Uh, that would enable government to deploy resources as fast as it can because uh, there would be a need to evacuate people to certain places and government would require immovable property for that purpose. So when government or the expropriating authority uses this authority, it is a temporary measure. Um, now, when this is used, the normal processes that are followed to, to negotiate and to... To, 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 to obtain uh, uh, the property through the normal channels, uh, they are uh, uh, suspended or short-circuited. Uh, this is similar to sometimes you, you hear in courts there is what is called uh, you know, an agent application. In the agent application, when you go to court, uh, the normal rules of court are suspended because it is a, a, an agent application. Um, so this is, uh, you know, in the mold of, uh, of, of su uh, something similar to that. Uh, the normal process uh, is uh, suspended, but it is temporary and, and may not last for more than a year. But it can be, it can be um, you know, extended from time to time. Um, and compensation is payable and it must be payable as soon as reasonably po uh, possible within 30 days from the date of expropriation. 
And even during the process of uh, an agent expropriation, the, if there is property that has been identified amongst those which requires to be expropriated permanently, that can still be, be done. An expropriation can also be withdrawn um, if it is in the public interest or the reason for the expropriation has changed. Kamans uh, among expropriation eka hule la morao ki expropriating authority ha ilo hore ki kamodi khatlehelong tsa sechaba kapo ilo hore le baka la expropriation ha le sa hlole le leteng the expropriating authority would use uh, this authority in terms of clause 21 but uh, the power to withdraw an expropriation must be exercised within three months from the date of an expropriation. So when you are served with a notice of expropriation, we calculate three months from that time. Within three months, <coughs> the expropriating authority has got an opportunity or a window within which they can withdraw an expropriation. The effect of that is that uh, it, re it restores the parties back to their original positions. In other words, you are given back your property uh, and uh, there are provisions in the bill where, which addresses issues like where, when uh, the expropriation occurred damage or cat on the property and so on. Those things are addressed in the bill as to how you go about addressing things like damages and so on. And uh, the standard of uh, the, the, the compensation for the damage would be reasonable costs and damages incurred uh, by, by the person who was uh, expropriated. Uh, the last item is uh, the expropriation register, which is uh, an innovation which, uh, uh, of this bill. The expropriation register was not a requirement in the, in the 1975 Act. Uh, this would assist a great deal so that across the three spheres of government, we know we have information in an orderly manner we know who has expropriated where uh, and so forth. Uh, and that will assist, in, uh, will assist government in proper planning and decision making. Uh, I liken this to the, the issue of, uh, you know, when you have a farm and you manage a farm and you, you have to do what is normally referred to as crop rotation to avoid uh, overgrazing. So you, for you to, to avoid things like overgrazing, you need to have information. Uh, so you need things like an expropriation register to know, you know who has expropriated where uh, and so forth, so that uh, government can uh, be in a position to take uh, uh, quality decisions. Um, the last aspect uh, really deals with procedural aspects uh, of delivering and uh, publishing of uh, 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 notices and the languages and so on. Those are covered in clauses 22, 23, 25, 27, and 30. Uh, that would be the end of the, of the presentation. I thank you, Chairperson. <clears throat> thank you so much uh, for the presentation. And I, hope, I, I, I saw you responding to some of them as you make your presentation, not agreeing with what you were saying. And I was laughing because they still have an opportunity to come and make their presentation formally before everyone. Uh, this is an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who, are, who wants to speak, for those of you who wants to engage, those of you who wants to make an input, this is an opportunity for you to do so. So this part, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Honorable Member Mnube, who will facilitate the following part. I have nothing to do with it. It's her discretion, and I ask 
that you give her the same respect that you have given me and you allow her to facilitate and direct the next part of the program. Uh, if you may know, Member Mnubi's experience in these meetings, uh, she was, uh, you know, uh, Member Diak, I know Member Makubela is not here, he was laughing at me and Member Fuchs when I told them that at some stage Member Mnubi was my teacher, Member Mkheti. Today we're sitting in the same table. Yeah, no. <laughs> some time back, she was my teacher. Today we're seated together, we're colleagues. You see how life is, ne? Now imagine if she was one of those teachers who told me that there would be nothing. Imagine if she was one of those teachers who told me that I'm a hood cop. I will be reminding her now, say, how does it feel to be seated to a hood cop? <laughs> now let me hand over officially to you, Member Mnube. Uh, the platform is yours. She's a teacher by, by profession, so she's, she's well vested in handling uh, disobediency, Member Mnube. Uh, thanks, Honorable Chairperson, for giving me this opportunity. Greetings to all participants that are here. Um, I'll start with my left, but before I do that, I would just want to indicate that West will be giving you some time to talk orally here. You will also have a chance if you feel that what you were saying is not yet crafted well to do the submission in a written form. So don't, um, don't, 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 don't be uh, uh, angry to say you are giving us five minutes or whatever this time today. Also, you are also allowed to speak in your own language if you want to. That is why we, we have this and those that have requested it, this will help in terms of uh, assisting in, 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 in interpreting uh, on what one will be saying in his or her own language. Can I then see, so that it will guide me, uh, how much time would I give you? Those who have interest of speaking, can I see the hands? Okay, let me then say I will give you 10 minutes each I'm, I'm, I'm judging from the hands. So, the second row, I only see one, two, three, four, five, six, or six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven. You have ten minutes. We only have this mic. Oh, oh, this mic there. Can you fall there in the make a line there? Make a line as I have called you. Can all those that raised their hands come here, please? Can we have you, number one, speaking? Number one, I'm giving you a chance to speak. Is number one having a mic? Good 
morning. I'm Councillor Saibron Smith from Infileni Lok Municipality. I'm um, working in Ward 25, which is the rural ward of um, the western part of Infileni. My question are, aren't this law just another way for government to have some more land? Why well, I'm asking that? As I'm in a rural ward, there are lots of previously disadvantaged farmers, black farmers, which have received land, land from government, but they st still don't have title deed. In other words, they were better off working on a white farmer. They've earned a better living as an as a employee on a white farmer's farm than under the local government, under the South African government, because the, the, of the fact that they don't have title deed of their land. They can't borrow money to farm. So my question is, are those people somewhere going to have title deeds on those properties, or is it just another land that's given out that's still under the control of government. My second question. I understand that people need land, but there are millions of hectares of land that's in the possession of government. What do government intend to do with those land? I think those land was supposed from the beginning for the people of this country. It must be given to the people. Those land already, that's the, the property of government. And those land must also be given out with title deeds, not like we called it in, in, in Afrikaans a long time ago as bywoners. Those people are just bywoners of the government on their land. They can't properly be farming on their land. Thank you. Thank you. Number two. Ke ke adu medisa pai tapi liboshe. I'm only going to say my name. Ke tapi tsile sa tsile ka sheko. Le na ke amu hele hele. Na ke man poto ke masidi solo poto ke tswa le fasi la Westside Park. Ah, mo twinki dagsij. Tabaya kaya pili ke na. Le tlaleng tshwara le mo ke tla di sitela teng mhlo mo ngale lemela ka le thelese. Ho na le le fatsi. Le le ne le ha uwe ke batho ba ba swe u bane ba le bitsa hore bane ba yentse business e bitswang ya skontire ne bitswa protea. Le fatsi le o ha e sa le go ngodisa matlo 1996-1997 ha to re fatsi le o re tlo ya o lona. Jwa le nna potso ya ka go rena ha ile hantle. Re tshwanetse re yemena go e kae hore le fatsi le gone ho finyela ho rona re gone ho fumana tse hore di tlhoka di tlhoka tsa rona ba di ka utlwa go le fatsi ke la batho ba South Africa ba duiseng ho lona empa jwa le rona ha re le une empa re duiseng ho lona ntse ke phela ka ra mokukule ana jwa e tla ba nene nna ka le bo number 3 before that, can the sound system address mm. what they are saying in terms of the echo? Number three. Uh, Lona Bong and Nigam Tembu from his book Yeah, uh, me now my question will go to uh, legal team, I, I, legal team and the uh, Uba Balapa. So I think we should also explain. Uguti. <laughs> What happened to the states that we receive? I don't know they're still current or not. Uguti, 
the 87 percent. Ngela u e mic. Yeah, the 87 percent. He owner abanya bantu nyabaza ngiti, and then 7 percent he owner abanya bantu. So kwenzo ahindlo, what informs those stats? That's the first question. Uh, and and ifuti the the other other issue ifuti. Did you do investigation based on the historical background? We got as far as 1510, because of our Tatanga in 1913. as far as 1510. So did you do investigation on your own as a legal department? This process must be informed with that information there would be. What is what happened exactly? Does the very same uh, 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 legal team also take advices Uguti uh, lend lend Eluguti Atatwa forcefully have you have your own investigation your own steps Uguti this is the land that was taken by force and this is the people that are paid, should benefit from that so we need to have that the last point you referring he's referring to 1975 act and it's in the 1913 Act. What is the difference between the two? Kwenzagalan between the two. Uh, which one is that the government settled on it? And yeah, so uh, yeah, so 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 Mina, I will, I will say I will, I will vote to the the bill should not appropriate uh, with compensation. I wanna say we waste a lot of money. Utenga into eyakho for what reason? So funege into manga be yaku retard. So but this act is also misleading at some point. Kuti kuni red tape somewhere somehow. So if funu tatin to yaku funu ye court, that's a red tape. Ye court. What if that person also defeat the food? Unye male massive of unye male and lawyers that are so much equipped with legal technical. So we will have people about so much equipped with technical and also defeat in court because of the court you are on its own is a red tape. Uh, all of us will be satisfied, we'll get what we want, all of us. Even though we are now on our facts, and this thing belongs to me based on the historical background, but it won't come to you because of Auna Mali and then Auna Maloya Lawa Fancy. So uh, the act itself or the bill, I a protection about our vulnerable chairperson. I know about our vulnerable others of protect. Who to law agana nix, magafun gulin to eyak, who's in Zaganja. How do you support this person? Because we victim. We victim CJ, sing a victim some of us. So look, bas touch laba zalibit, abazang bas pama pepper, a nail, because abana, and it's since basila, maba veil. So not batato balashalali and so on. So the system is not honest enough. So if it's funuk tilana this is we must be as far as honest. We could scorn all of us. Melana see the right. Nyabo. Number four. Okay. See on. Mina Wuntum Bisotama Cosm Manglala Air Zone Twenty One S Booking Westside Park. Sitalaguma within to the RTP. Sina more than twenty five years Sitalaguleza Zintu. Go to as is into as the cool as issue with years eight to the cool man a banyavantabanga says. Sitale Amari registration as a war told. Say a cooler Sitama property away to go to Asnazo is Asna Wamadungelo, Wama Pepo Bonis goodies into Zet. Bengtaluk Booza, Manja Maniza, West Billy, La Bestaban goodies is all told in Pendulosa Log, Wama Sesa Kulumogo Kalangales Kalo Zet. Yabo. Thank you, number five. Uh, thank you very much. Kalibito ke kaberwa hawadi. Aje bato ke representa organization ne mare ke representa chabasa ranto. Kita le kamona na kahore. 
when how far we the presentation, it is disappointing. Hore, how far we chance how the public can give a presentation. It is true that um, seven percent of the population owns and controls more than eighty percent of the land of South Africa. And I'm talking about white people in particular. Not only that, but 7% of the very same population owns and controls 80% of our economy. These are factors they are, they are supposed to guide the expropriation bill. Now, if these factors these are mentioned in Horo Namonana, it, it just means for the legislature itself, it ho channel our thinking channeling our thoughts, everything is okay. Whereas we are uh, oppressed. The expropriation bill is supposed to for us to find freedom, but we are not finding that in these uh, engagements. Another thing is that um, common law, which is foreign law, which is British law, it still oversees the administrative law which is supposed to oversee the expropriation bill. This just means we are still not finding expression because the law alluring a guide the expropriation bill. It is a foreign law which favors white people. Now, why are not traditional leaders not mentioned in this? Because as Bantu people, the custodians of land originally. But in the expropriation bill, they are not mentioned. We are talking about, we are being told about administrative laws, administrative courts, uh, uh, administrative authorities, all of which, they are corrupt, they are corruptible, and they do not represent as majority Abatu. The court, they are not for us. Common law, which is a foreign law, which is a British law, it still oversees our customary law. It still in the our customary law, it had it our traditional leaders and our traditions as Chabasaranzo. So we are still not represented in this expropriation bill. As far as moral and thing, as far as where, where we are, we are concerned. One last thing Egbert Lang we mentioned is is that the land that has been expropriated thus, thus far, it is a uh, uh, land elurinke kiadi concentration camps. Makeshi ni having a title deed called Keshi it means nothing. Location is a concentration camp. I get to borrow it. I buy a drink as his suit, but it location has he had to go now. We were forced to go live there. So how I can see to Emma, let us mention a more. Like Emma Itore, they have expropriated, they have given us title deeds, Kaharadi concentration camp. You must know who these people are not representing you as we are They are not there for us. So, Kibata Hue Kuala Gaufel, we are not represented as Batuaba, as Chabasaranzo. The fact, Yaore, it is not mentioned that we do not own and control any land. 7% of our population, being white people, still own and control more than 80% of arable land, Gara, South Africa. It is a big problem for Rona. It means we are not represented. And the fact that it's not being mentioned, it is a butata, because they are channeling our thoughts, they are channeling us. Thank you. Legislature. Nisala at that floor, your flat, in a problem, your arthritis, in a problem, your spinal. Saying is Kukil, Manginga, among Salangia lepers, near Safutina masterpiece in your pants. Angas good to 
umhlaba wethu bawuthathile bathi ngeke sakhelo la sihlala khona besihlala emajardin wethu sihlala kahle sinamanzi wethu into bokumele basenzele yona ebiyiketlo bokumele nje ukuthi basishiftise basakhele la basakhela sihleli khona bangazishiftise bayo sibeke ma flatin how come singahlale flatin ukhona umuntu ongahlale flatin ano ano ana bantwana ano kuwathi umuzi wakhe impilo yakhe yonke mina umama mama washona wabhalisa indlu ngo 1996 akaze ayithola nale yendlu nanamhlanje sisayi khalela lendlu kamama angaze ngiyithole lendlu kamama instead ngiyofaka e flatin ngahamba ngaya epitori e settlement bangnika iphepha nale ngiliphetha information ye housing settlement bangitshela ukuthi indlu yami izoba ebiyiketlo bangnika ne stand number khona manje ngihlala e flatin azange bangitshela nge flat bangitshela ngendlu nge stand azange bangitshela ukuthi ngizohlala e flatin nje 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 ngenkuku mina please ibiketlo ingifelile ifere na khenge housing ingifelile bathengise izindlu zethu ebiketlo ngicela nizeni ebiketlo nizobona lento enzakala ebiketlo sikhathele sihlile nabantu abangazange babhalise izindlu thina siphumela siphumile ku housing legislature kodwa bathi leyo list akusi iyo basithatha basifake ma flatin bafaka abantu abangani babo nge imali ngoba mina ngihluphekile ngana mali ngoba ngina mali angisebenzi kumele ngihlale flatin kumele ngiyofele flatin mina ngiye ngabhalisa indlu ngidala ngibhalisile indlu yami nali iphephela emile ngibona ukuthi libuya epitori housing eh settlement ngaya epitori ngayo sibeka ukuthi kobe mpela ngiphume ngiphumile e housing ngiyitholile indlu kodwa ngiyitholanga nge ngiyitholi flat how come manganginiki flat ngimdala ngingaka bathatha abantwana abancane ebiketlo bafake izindlini into enzakala ebiketlo ngelithabo ebuhlungu bafethu sizo buhlungu sizo kugukela ma flat ina third floor Ngingaka naye ngincwadi yami yakwadoctor ngiphetha incwadi yakwadoctor ngimabonisile awo abo babe housing ukuthi udoctor ngibhalele incwadi ukuthi ngithathe medication ngingangeni le eflatin phezulu at least bangiphe indlu ori bangihlise phansi kodwa bayalile ngoba angina mali ngihluphekile kunini si vote ya le ANC kodwa isifailile isifailile ANC bathu bafethu thina sibuzwile ubuhlungu la emhlabeni abantu badli imali thina singatholi nix mongwe na mali la emhlabeni awusi umuntu mina ngizoba ubuhlungu ebiyiketlo ngicela ukuthi nibuye nize ebiyiketlo nizo silungisela nake nasilungisela udai nawe ke waya e legislation nabuya nazakithi nabo nabo Mrs Lindwell sisulu kodwa mnathi nizosakhela kwafika bo Paul Mashatile bathi bazosinika itande kodwa sanika ma flat umhlaba wethu udliwe udliwe abantu singabazi wase ebiyiketlo kwakhiwa mase ama mo bond house ebiyiketlo nyabonga Number seven. Oh, mini kamala mutembega waga mashifan. My name is Pumzile Mashakwan from Pumzile Foundation. So. Nikabang kuting zo sebenz zisa ulim lam kuting izong izwagal. So mina ni pege iland around Sibukeng. That land can be utilized by our young people. Laba abang a sebenz, but ban ban ama skills uguti bangaka ama factory ba kono kwenza i agriculture. Enye enkul mangayo lapo i. He learned. He opposed in Kanyes, where young people maybe bang a corner wood by utilizing that land. Maybe back a big hotel because as na hotel more tina moval a petrol bandabamia. If una ma tourist, if na ba yola la a a drop in a ma hotel. So that land, please, stella e provincial government. Ige ipege kuti whose land leyo e logi ashala since safi galapo esbuke is talele asas kuti egaba so always mani etropin ni ipega lo land kuti le land le inyanza ito ikul especially young people they are not working they are jobbing on the left hand side coming from esbuke kuna land enkul leyo land masafi ga esbuke Begini zinla zifu, kuna chibegu begu in benza agriculture lab, kote wa pela sana na sana mix, land le land dala ishezi ni mnyar, so ni chabla la wote today 
sikwazi ukuzo kipa ama vizu ama zu etu ugutie ile ndile ekona kufunaka tila abantu esi ngazange stole ichansi abantu anabeju bagwazi kusebe nzisi o mama bayatunga benzani aguna factory evali izi kolo mazi izo vulu uzo obona kune shopenye basha ila ine kusuga la yali ogu uguti ile ndi mga kiwa in factory abo mama bagwazi Uguti batunga my uniform, including uh, young people. Uh, Angish uguti uh, abo mama kpela, sorry. Na bafana o puti banga kona. Abanyi ba eval tech, ba yenza bo designing ing ing. But la eval or la etropen, e, 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 e fer yeneke. Kune one shop le eshaya ilai nuksuga le ichige. So atanga lapo i, I, I uniform yabantuan. So, tell us what you government. I got paid the one double. Next to Spokane municipality, there is a site lapo Estalev. Lapo, we put in place the fact in a I guess when the fact not a a a a a a a val or Spokane. A mid val. There's a lot. There's a vast and yeah yeah land. Oh, we put. Eh, in a bandi bas niggas buy. I was once a CTW. Masi hamba sifuna abanta bange na ma ID. Ngesi sika tibe stresspasa. Masi ngeene la pastolo uguti. Lelendi uchani bukwele gota kutwa ega banbani ya boni. Masi ngeene la singeene sihambe sloku sihamba. Sizo kitatela situchula ngoba siya trespassa. Gota sifuna uksiza bantu. Bona labo bantu labo. Egu leo lendi. Aba shalanga gashe. Aba pete la pili land, aba niga zbe land, aba ba pete gas. Kutoa chala lo la inlo zo choli twenty rand. Ai komnats, we need land la po. Agna agna pego kutu muntu ushale sbuke, ushale mitval, ushale agud. Ma land iba available for agriculture. Nabantu abanje ngati, abamnyam. Ma ba faabu, ba kongu tina bo ba 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 bange ngo agriculture special. Abantuana, abasafisa uguti nabo bavul. I ekonomi, ufunaga nati, si na ma ma leliban, si guaz uguti, si isonde segit, because maslogu spego ta sebens nan nan. I land i kwel la evalo uguti inga, uguenzo ma fetching, uguenzo uguenzo i landro i unsebens. Lape inshala kona to yesterday. Bas pile short of a small site. Uguti si chan. Singa bo mama. Tine singa bo koko. Sonja izugulu nezi izugula nezetu. Ngoba ugutla jaturi. Sitela uguti government. Asisize na lapu. Uguti senza njani. So, enye. Nzobu. Kuluma nje kpela. Residential. Kune ngote si ito uguti singa jala lapu. Mushate. Sienze. Opposite kwa masiza. Kunenda ulapo uguti singa isebe nzisa. Please, bestela uguti. Ema wot inuetu. Ama wot cancelers. Na abo, bakizu bazo siza. Uguti senza njani. So, about the bill, iba kufuna uguti siza. Siza ufundiso nye bill. Uguti le bill le. Isiza gupi. Kwenza gala na. Because na. I don't understand. Uguti bill ganjani. Because uyazi maunga fundang. Wakunya guzwa. Wakunya guzwa. Please, sikela uguti. Eh, around Spokane, around Everton, again, we are not going to be able to meet Val. Now, we are going to be able to meet Val. So, if you are going to be able to meet Val, we are going to be able to meet Val. We are going to South Africa. So, if you are going to be able to meet Val, we are going to be free. We are going to be able to meet Val, and then we are going to be able to meet Val, and then we are going to be able to meet Val, and then we are going to be able to meet Val. We are going to be able to meet Val, and then we are going to be able to meet Val. So, but now, Good um, morning, everybody. My name is Councillor Lillian Godisang, and I'm a PR councillor in Ward 11 at Midvale Local Municipality. 
Um, I'd like to welcome uh, everyone from the provincial legislature and other stakeholders involved today to bring us uh, the expropriation bill with uh, its amendments. I just want to make a few inputs um, on, on, on the bill. I'll start with clause number 17, 4C, which reads as follows. Despite provisions of any other law, the expropriated owner remains liable to the municipality for rates and other charges levied on the property until the right to possession vests in the expropriating authority in terms of section 8, 3F, or section 94. I just want to add that I find that this clause in particular um, has a problem because if the date of possession is later than the expropriation date, then the municipality may hold the former owner responsible for municipal costs. So this, in essence, becomes unfair. Um, I would suggest that it read an uh, open quote, or the ownership passes to the expropriation authority, whichever occurs first, so that it, it, it closes that gap. And then on the second clause, it's, it's clause 19.8, any appeal against the decision of a court on the amount of compensation will not prevent the expropriating authority from expropriating for the amount approved or decided unless a court grants an interim interdict based on compelling prospects of success on appeal. Again, I, I'm seeing that there's an issue that could be problematic in this clause because as any dispute or lack of finality relating to the compensation it should halt the expropriation process until it has been finalized. So we can't say let's go on with the um, expropriation, but there are still teething problems which are, which are not finalized. Uh, and then my second last one, on clause 25.2, it reads, a civil court may impose a fine up to a maximum prescribed amount in favor of the National Revenue Fund on a person referred to in subsection one upon application to the expropriating authority brought on notice to the affected person. Again, uh, my feeling is that uh, the ministers authorized in section 26.1D to determine the final amount. I feel this leaves too much discretion to the minister there should be instead a framework or frame of reference for the determination of a suitable fine. Or alternatively, the, the, the bill should specify an amount itself. There should be a section which says, should you not be able to do one, two, three, you will be, fine, you'll be fined by however much. Um, and lastly, um, clause number 26, 1D. Uh, the concern is that if um, the minister is given uh, the power to determine the maximum civil penalties, um, this could also be determined within the bill itself. So it's saying, you know, when you put an individual in charge of uh, deciding the, the penalties and deciding the actual costs, it, it can be subjective at times that if I come as Lillian, I might be given a higher penalty or a higher fee to pay vis-a-vis -vis someone else. So we're saying let's standardize the, the, the penalties. Let's have a schedule to say if you transgress this point, then you have to pay a penalty of however. Um, and I think, you know, it's really important that we note that um, land is a very emotional uh, topic in our country in South Africa. And also, although we welcome the, the, the fact that, you know, more people will have access to land because South Africans are crying out for land, for farming, for agricultural purposes, etc. I still maintain that it needs to be done so legally and due processes has to be followed. So we welcome uh, the le provincial legislature for giving us this platform for us as normal residents uh, and leadership to engage on these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, number nine. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson, and uh, uh, my name is uh, Dedi Mullo. Of course, I'm the resident of Subukian Zone 10. Uh, but I just want to start with a question in this regard. I mean, my understanding is that the government have uh, thousands of hectares uh, that is in the state's hands. Why don't we start dealing with the land that is currently on the state hands? before we, 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 wish, we jump into expropriation. Let's, let's go straight to what we have as government. 
I know even some municipality, they don't even understand or know uh, how, well, what you call, um, the land that they have as the municipality. Uh, Chair, I also understand that, I mean, uh, the bill has been uh, drafted to repeal the Expropri Expropriation Act of 1975 uh, to bring expropriation uh, of property in line with the Constitution. Uh, despite a number of a, a positive changes, I know it was engaged, it's not a new thing, it came in since from 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, all the process that uh, actually has been done uh, in Parliament to, uh, uh, that has been conducted in Parliament. Uh, of course, uh, a concern that uh, needed to, to, to be highlighted is the intangible property that will require its own specific guideline for expropriation. Uh, in, in this area, I, I want to suggest that it's either uh, the additional uh, guidelines are brought into the bill to deal with this, or the definition of property be amended to exclude in, in, in uh, what you call intangible uh, property. Uh, at this stage, uh, Chair, uh, while it may be necessary to repeal Expropriation Act of 1975, as is no use, uh, uh, what you call it has no standard in the current, uh, what you call, uh, constitution. Uh, the new expropriation, expropriation bill cannot be uh, supported at, 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 at this, uh, what you call, stage, at its format. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Number 10. Thank you. My name is Councillor Finter. I am a ward councillor of Ward 1 in Mfuleni Local Municipality. I've got four points that I'm going to be very short and sweet on uh, regarding this, compens uh, this act. First of all, we spoke about compensation is case by case. Each one we treat it on its own. Offer this compensation not an open door now for fraud and corruption from the grassroots of the municipalities up to the top level of government for communities. Secondly, are we not opening doors here that we can do infl uh, inflating our immigrants and illegal immigrants into the country at the cost of the, our own people that needs land here? Immigrants that bought more and more land comparing with our own people that don't have the opportunity. Thirdly, nothing here, I see nothing here on procedures to deal with trusts and minor children with properties with both parents passed away and the property is left or with disabled or the, um, the, the elderly people who stays behind and there's a property where they are not the owner but the family who passed away didn't left anything for them. Then it can be taken under their feet and they can literally start being in streets. And lastly, how are we going to implement this um, to get it done, this act done properly and successfully if our local government like in Fuleni, I'm referring to and many others, are not actually addressing successfully currently the current land use and town planning complaints and illegal building properties. Illegal buildings are running up and down without proper infrastructures and we, our municipality don't do a successful job addressing that. So how are we going to have security to implement this act then? Um, successfully for the benefit of everybody of in this country. And my, my last just comment is, we must look at the protecting of our families and children, properties when we step into this whole act. And how do we secure the protecting of our people and the future of our people? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, when I called for the hands, there were only ten. Remember, I was saying one, two, three, gang, gang. 
Now there are many new hands. We are number 10. I don't know where other things. I got pinned in. I got pinned in. Um, okay, though as I am and born again, and can I go ten? Okay, who's speaking? Mrs. Padosa from Empulen here in Fiena Heng. I've only got two points. My first point is my concern actually is the mushrooming illegal immigrants and businesses here in Friena. And then we are very concerned that how is it going to help our economy because the economy is not growing at all. Most of the business are the are people from outside. Seems to me that people locally are not interested in business or they're being denied the right to open businesses. The illegal people are granted more rights than the local people. My second point is um, I've got a, a claim that I lodged in 2014 on the land where uh, our uh, grandparents were evicted from top location. In my hand here, I've got uh, an acknowledgement of the receipt of my claim in 2014. I got that uh, acknowledgement in 2017. So um, uh, I've also got the reference number here, it's R3 slash, slash 11.8 slash 262 slash 24220. I want to know when is it going to be uh, paid or I don't know how do they process the, uh, the claims. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Kopalin Sorele in Kikupao, Emma Gamo, to Kehatsit, at least in Maria Kahono, Zamai. All protocol observed at Kakenata Ben Zapuyaka, Kitobua Cassiso, Turki, Kutor Hakepoti, Kitsevo and Turkey, Wheeling, Eats as and so on. Ke review ya legislator. from where? Okay, no, it's fine. Can I be allowed to use freedom of speech? I will announce where I am from at a time when I am no, feeling obliged. My name is William Ngonelo. I'm coming from what six M. Fulwen. I thank you. Apologies then if that was an offense. Then in terms of Tabaya legislative review, one thing I have, uh, one thing that I became aware, Katabatsa portfolio committee, uh, submissions and oral submissions, all that. Uh, it is, I think it has been articulated or the bill of expropriation has been rejected twice. Regardless of how many times community have been engaged, this will certainly come down to political parties whether do they agree on national assembly that do they pass the bill or not. We can stand here, 90% of us saying that we, we agree with the expropriation of land the land must be expropriated under issues of parents who were here, Panavarona and all that. But eventually, 
and and this ke nana go ke nthutla mneng e be e be tlie o re myself there was a time whereby we came here at Frenache i made written submissions to portfolio regarding expropriation of land i indicated specifically into items that i feel they must be reformed but that expropriation bill was rejected simply it shows that uh, this is a decision that is going only to benefit a political warfare i kneke ke batla ho bua le portfolio ka taba ya as common people community people how is this go this process of coming here uh, bringing plasma table at least i'm going to eat and all that how is that going to help us as historically disadvantaged people when we voice our, when we voice our dissatisfaction to be sure that okay this is going to happen that was my first item uh, and then on second item ke batla ho bua ka tabatsa department of land reform i found that in department of land reform there are three programs if i'm not mistaken a land tenure act land redistribution and land acquisition land acquisition which deals with political issues of how land was taken from black people all that land redistribution with uh, economical emancipation ke ke na le potso mabakeng a di maspala tsa gona i am a farmer i'm going to speak as a farmer and i will also speak as a citizen as william ngonel i led in a struggle of land emancipation whereby our community members were in need of service of housing the department of government a uh, housing department is no longer able to give that uh, service of housing at this time i think i was here last year department of housing announcing that they only gonna build legislator portfolio saying they only have budget to build 1200 houses which are not able to capacitate even for a one human settlement now eh ke ne ke le le bakeng la la maspal as a farmer ke ke latla me ke ke na le business ke ya NYDA for funding i don't have any eh uh, trust fund i think you know the rest unlike the advantaged people when i go to nyda i'm i'm i mean poultry farming i do that farming at the backyard of my mother now when i got at nyda nyda was requesting for me to have a seven year, seven years lease of land seven years lease when I went to Mfulu and requesting for seven years of land, a municipality cannot give anybody. It's a, it's a beneficiary selection and land allocation policy. I want a portfolio to be aware about that policy must be also reformed. I'm, I'm speaking about the input that are going to change the lives of ordinary people. Uh, or any municipality, they give three year lease. They don't allow anybody to have a seven year lease. Uh, I'm not speaking about service delivery issues here. I'm speaking on item of land. Uh, so what I'm saying is that on municipality level, there's a lack of knowledge uh, to municipal, I don't know, Salga or what, when it comes to beneficiary selection and land allocation policy, there's a miscommunication even with the departments of government. NYDA, it's an agency of government, but it is not aware of how local municipalities conducting itself. Nekibua as a farmer. Now I want to speak as a community member. I get a community. The percentage is a hore. Seventy percent is owned by white people. I know that in South Africa, South Africa is about 
125 million hectares, if I'm not mistaken, 125 point something hectares. Uh, 77 to 70 something percent belonging to white people. Now, in Turkey, but long who as citizens, what is the portfolio going to do about the audit of human settlements that have happened? Uh, because we don't have any report of uh, showing that out of 122 million hectares. This human settlement, this is in Kile land, the Ekayetang, five million. We, we don't have that information. That's what I want to know uh, on terms of the community. ODT, it's one and the E, Yale Fatsi, La, La, Lenguenke, Ketarigan, Kidi, Kidi human settlement. My last item is that uh, when it comes to Department of Land Reform, I've made, we even made application as farmers with my association uh, and associated farmers. We made up application. There was an advert application of 77 hectares of a land in Mfulwe. I think it was last year in a premier speech, a provincial speech, announcing that there's going to be SEZ, Special Economic Zone of Agricultural Hub. There's more land which has been bought and handed to Sidibane District. And that reflected, I think it was this year, when we saw 77 hectares of a land uh, being advertised. We applied to that uh, advert. So in Tweke Batlang Webotago, we continue to be historically disadvantaged people in extend their hope. Why in our region, why is not a regional satellite office of a land reform? We had to repalame as historical you have two minutes. It's fine leadership. We had to repalame from more landing to Pretoria. The submissions can only be submitted to Pretoria where else we don't even own the means of transportation. So, in a little I think the rest if it will be covered by leaders. Thank you. Over and out. My name is Solima Tima, representing um, Sidibeng Skill Development Project. I started, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I started this project in 19, I mean, in 2018. And then it was going very, very, very well. I started it after I have um, I have done the, the feasibility study about the unemployment of the youth in South Africa, especially in the Val Triangle. I've trained about 500 youth for different skills. For example, agriculture, electrician, plumbing, dressmaking, beautician, and the others. So I rented a plot in. Um, Strickfontein. Uh, it was vandalized during the total lockdown. So the owner of the land didn't uh, give us a lease after the, we they bent the, 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 the structure during those uh, lockdown. So 
As I said, I've done the feasibility study in the Val about unemployment for, for unemployment of the youth in the Val, especially the drug abuse, because these kids, they spend a lot of time idling without doing anything after matriculating or maybe finishing their studies. So they need employment. So I've got the solution. And then I applied, I mean, I approached the Sidibem Breweries and the President Hyper Supermarket. They are prepared to help me. Uh, so what I need is the land. I need a plot where I can do that. It will definitely reduce the, the drug abuse and un unemployment of the youth. So I'm, I'm appealing to you people to help me. I've done a business plan. And uh, my business plan, I sent it to Sipon Kosi. I don't know if maybe it reached him because of the post office is not functioning well. I've written it to Pakistan. I'll come to that after that one. I've written it to uh, TP Nsoko in the IDC. I've written it to uh, Sipo Khadewe. No one wants to do anything about it. But with Pakistan, after I've given him that uh, 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 business plan, it was, and then he, Makura changed him, and then he, re, he, he reproduced this, this thing, and then he made it a project for the province. About 6,000 uh, youth agriculture or something. That is my idea. It was stolen from me. And then now, Lisuf is coming with uh, uh, the, uh, my, my other idea of um, uh, 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 installation of uh, what solar something is in my business plan. This is true. I wanted to stop it, so I, I approached my legal advice to, and then he told me that no, but when I phoned this, uh, I phoned Lusufi, he said I must come and see him first. Um, the officials of legislation. Do you understand that? I've my got my business plan, I've got those things, if you can see them. You will see what is my, 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 the, 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 the counselor, the ward counselor of this one here. She knows about it. So I need, I need a land, please. Hello. I know that you are coming here just to, 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 to what? To, 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 to please your bosses. And then from here, we'll never hear you again. If you don't mind, I can take your telephone and then I will phone you and then you will never respond. <laughs> I know you. economic development. And the other court you are food. If you have heard me, then I thank you. Now, oh, Papa okay, thank you very much. I greet everybody. My name Benjamin Labatala. I'm a resident here in Vereniging. But the issue that is on hand is about getting the land back. That is very important. As we talk about, let's say, plus minus 
and 70%. Just traveling through South Africa, you can start from Messina, go down or Bay Bridge to Cape Town. Our portion of the land is not even visible. Traveling by car, you stay on the N1. From where I've started, you can go down to Cape Town. You'll see the farmlands. You can just stay on the N1. You can't even get out of the car because it's a wire fence on the left and on the right. So we don't have land. It's so simple. The government just need to leave the 30% in the hands of the people that own the land. That is good, but let us share that 30%. Let them absorb the 70% and take shares on the farms. If one man, that 30%, must accommodate that 70%. And if it is a farmer, he's got the farm. Let the government take the land. Then the farmer gets 25% and the people get the other 25%. In that manner, everybody will have a share. Leave them on the farms so that they don't go away. They stay there, but they must know the land belongs to the government. He gets his 25% and the whole community will get the other 25%. Then I want to come to this portion that it said that the government land must be given to the people. It's for a long time we hear that. No, the land that is in the hand of the government, that land needs to be kept as it is for future developments. So that if there is any development that comes in the future, there is vacant land that the government can use so that the government is not without land. Truly, what we see now is the skills. For us to be a farmer, you have to go to the university. Now, on the farms, all the black people that we have in this country, we come from the farms where we ran the show. The white man doesn't know what is going on on the farm. He is just there as the owner. But the black people that are working on the farm, they know the cattle. They know the medicine that you should use. As I tell you, as I'm sitting here, I'm just now, because I am not educated, but I can run for you a feedlot. I can start for you a tannery from zero. That is leather manufacturing. I can start from the farm and produce for you the most sophisticated leather. That is for BMW, for Daimler Chrysler. I can do that, but I am not skilled, I'm not educated. I can, as I sit here, start for you a match factory because we as the black people, we know these things, but we have never been given the chance to do these things. We can, I tell you, I can start a match factory. Here in Verenigung, I came by opening a leather factory. I went from here, I went to Namibia, 
I opened a leather factory for other people. I went to Zimbabwe. I opened a leather factory for other people. Now I am finished. I'm old already. I come from Zambia, where I started a feedlot from 10 Those cattle to 700. To Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I'm coming to the site. One, two, three, four, five, six. When I oh oh. Seven Right, in Pelen. Number one. Ballet eight. Ballet eight. Not your boy of food. I to get the eight. Now, Boba Fulis Number one. Everton. Langsale food. ama Sashina Kodwa angiboni mpumelele kulento. Inte ngibona ngibona u government wethu usadlala yona expropriation noma it is possession or in I don't know. Sen confused manje. Ngoba lapha Everton, i Everton was established in 1904. Iphetha ama freehold title deed ownership. Kodwa kusaculo iculo lokuthi umasipala still owns ama property abo baba mkhulu bethu. Logo gung zusup sunga bi. Guti gashagasha siapi. Mwa gumanje jovang pete leli pepanje. I pepe li puma wa land restitution. Labo kazwa kon guti ama property lawa are restorable back to ba owner aba nigas baz. Abaz claimil. So ang saz sengti tegi lugut u claima. Nogu votela section twenty five. Nogu nogu force remove wa ini ogu ego na go na ngambela angsaz ma ingelu wa zuguti na i government it is us respect ni ni ngova ba tigiti asleme na ingwa tere land restitution ni pet si have si follow wong ama 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 steps ale ingwa ti si claim my land yong kesi felt the peace organization abanye seba feel namzeng se tu se ne tun. Kodwa angiboni impumelelo kule nto esiyiqoxayo nanamhlanje ingakho ngilalela bangani bami abahleli labo ethi ungathi kwenziwe i-campaigning style lapha kule nto ayikho le nto enzakala ngoba sisa experience same problem mina ngiphuma ku apartheid testing i testile mina sengitheste enye futhi enziwa abantu engibavotele into power not the same land Unombuzo to Nasuk Nigeland is the Wenzan. Got the Sassini Sassi Tatel and Lenda Octala. Why Sassalella Guyo? Says Buzo, a band of Bagetti food to go to Lenda, so Wenzan and Ayo. In Subsunga being a tolly, so good man a bang to Nugabantu Gabi. Manging Zokalu would mean I get tolly respect, sing a band by Savatoni, in leadership lay a lay, in lay a lay. In Tangan, again, the La Pevatu, Sine Olo La Pema Fatan. This is the address in the Basse Everton and small farms. Good Sienzanjan. Before Siagwenye Yamatlim Amakul, 
ngoba kumanje sihleli in a dark city ngenda bokuthi uEscom cannot as restore electricity sine debate manje phakathi kwamasipala ne provincial government no masipala no Escom asisazi ukuthi kwenzakalani ngathi ngiyabo sebonga number 2 Ah, uh, San Bonani, Mupinki Wagamati is Bongo, a e, Nizelana Nizokulumanja into Zimbi, a e, Nizelana Nimele Abantu Aban Abasupegayo Abasuele in the Ozokala, Sias Belela Sikela in the Oyokala, Uti Lapes Kelikona, Sikel Uti Sipiwe in the Oleo, Sikale Sikululeg and Natisibe and Makaya, Moba Astalang Singatand, Slalom Moba Sikupegi, the singers Uti Sia Pisia Kula. Sikulisa ne ingane si ipepile mshani. Na mshanje lezo ingane matota matala gotwa ikaya asinalo. Sizitele lumshaba obega abantu abantu ndu guti bagu azu kshala bakululege babe nestima. Ogwe sibili nkelu guti abantu abayetu abadala nala baba ngane abaswele indawo lapho banga kala kona indawo zo guti bagu azu ipilisa. Gulo mshaba wa na mshanje South Africa maunju lu 35 years au sa qualify uksebenza. Sitting a in Dow, Lapos is or sevens are connaces, I care less. He was sevens against Antazet. Sipiwe in Dow, Lapos is or was good in Mau Ubega is in quite a tough lane. In Ganyako, it was good for Nipangoba, a Saffroni Pegan, Singabantaba Miamangoba, Siku Gile, Sibega, Elena Spiwindow, Yogu Sevens, Nkela Logo Gubili Pay. Uh, so, I Fasilo la tenre lo ki paile ka 2017. Ande ka 2017, ka Oktober, ra invite wa mona Ezrek, ke Paul Masha, dile sansele MEC, a human settlement. Ak loko la la fasilo o redule o lor. Empa ka 2022, ka di 23 sa mei, ra eviktu wa, pleke eo haesa bizwa hore, ke mega project. Ese bizwa le tabong, eh, ke... So, I salary Hailo hona jwa le ke haile hona ka strate re e victoire plaque nya gona re haile ka strate a gana mo go dulwa nteng a gana bodulo ba nne re sepi ina se le bodulo ba gona bona bo dutse 5 years mo re e victoire without notice ka sa jwa tswa next go getwa e victoire ga mo ba ka fe go te re kwe ka 2020 a ga se be sa square re ne re tsa ba ile developer ma re se re tshola ile hona nga plaque ka shekotse empa Paul Masha dile ha tswa bo ile ntho ya hore plaque o ke a sa square we say redule ho yona ba re inkila sky le bodulo ba batho jwa le nek ba tla tswa go hetsa halang o fikela ka shekutse cos re kwa la selemo jwa le redule a strateng ka baka la di eviction tse semolao ntse gona ga tsa ndi semolao le ka dipampire tsa teng ga ga tsebo gona ho tlo fela la hetsa Solomon Mohele has to take it a cart of Saka ever to Mohasho Gesha, Hobata U Development Trust. It is a claim you can hit it back from nineteen ninety eight. And a case at Lame Eu, Tot Fonda, Lame Eu. I saw a Puvu with Ona Joy and Ona Jeba Buantosa. Ta expropriate Mari Lendi Eo. He must own a government, and a government of Lowns are then. 
baro u bua taba ya lende magoe o ba nke ena ke ka tlamele pele a lise lende pele yena ya rona den go go tshekwa ntho magoe a ka mara a tla tshere lende a ro e a ke tla ba tlo ya Uh, uh, I'm a descendant of Everton Freehold. I'm a descendant of Everton Freehold uh, settlement that was established in 1904. What I found out is that Ubaba Wang Tungela Ingubo is Ning, and Egging Isho Uting, where we pin Tangano, as Ning, as Zinga Moboya, a Binyamazan. What I'm trying to say is that uh, the new dispensation brought us where we are today in terms of the Land Restitution Act of 1994 where people claim land, but it never achieved its objectives regarding the land that was dispossessed. Because you find out our ancestors in Everton, uh, their land was not dispossessed, and it was not taken. In terms of land claim, where they were referred to a land claim, where in terms of land restitution, so uh, it became distorted. Because Everton, as it is, it was established through self-determination. The first settlement to be established at the Transvaal. So it was Everton. So for referring uh, the people of Everton to Lentlin, uh, it never make uh, the freehold land to be restored back to its rightful owners. So. In terms of land expropriation, the government, as it wants to expropriate land for public uh, benefit, public use, is distorting to us really descendants of Everton. Because when you find within this farm, uh, on humanitarian grounds, most of our land has been commercialized, uh, industrialized. Kibuaga, a freehold farm. In the remaining extent, your Tremu, Dorengale, eh, Ritz Prade, Quaha Fontein, eh, they establish this eh, Everton eh, estate. So, Eba question now since we refer to land restitution in terms of land claim, Esa Honang will achieve that thing. How can the uh, expropriation bill assist the descendants of Everton within our heritage that Everton should be restored to the legitimate landowners. Because when you're looking at things now, our land is being administrated by the political system where you find uh, Salga have demarcated some of our land to other regions of province. So we know where our land starts and where our land begins. In terms of the survey that was done in 1904 by D.P. Taka, and as we know that Everton, first it was registered uh, at the Deeds Office in 1884, when the farm was co-owned by uh, Mr. Fuljun. So regarding question here, the restoration of yeah, a free whole farm, where we are looking at Orion, where you find the African community have their own land. That was established after uh, Everton was already there in terms of yeah, the new dispensation. They were allowed to have that independence regarding the new dispensation in New South Africa. So I want to come in this manner that we, the people or the descendants of Everton, we feel that the ruling 
uh, 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 government or the new dispensation has failed our ancestors in terms of restoring Everton as a freehold farm. I pause there. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eh, kile tumeri saba holo, kwa ndi sote zif, eh, kitoako Everton was 26, anda rural women assembly, eh, na taba ya kaya taba ya land distribution, niki tare kiko pa government a process taba ya ya land, ba tu banke tu land ba kuti sezo land ya bona, because kio nantori ba tlangre ba tla lefatu le sebedis. And then bon kun barona barasile lili fats. And then ohana jale process sabona di dula di chinja hubana limilao eba ding. E delay some process and ba end up haba shoka hala. And then liti pampiri di la she. So reko pa process sabona haike ibe fast because ba ding ba tu ba toting. So why ba ba mba swa tola hota tewle process it zeo. And then number two reko pa tabeng za di municipality. Di maspala za gona hadi eze land audit. Ritzebe hori maspala wa gona. Ona li landi ekai so that ahonore abe la land reli di communities. Because rea sebeza gara di communities. At the same time re occupy the open spaces. Tesa clean wing. Mo huto luang batu babu la uwe huton. Rea di sebedi sa rea lima huton. And then maspala hakono rifa. A di pampir or release a land so that a retola development, even if retola the sponsors. So recopa maspala a cheketa by a landi a honor abela landi as a communities. Recopa hape a tabenya yadi lisi maspala askarapata lisa because di kangate o di klinwa gerona a di klinike na maspala tabenya bui tu recopa hape. Asa ripata lisi jualo. Kero ona badi shoko melang. E the same time recreate musebezi. Ona risa khonu ho utola. Karu di municipali tuwa gona. Kapa karu government tuwa gona. So re khonu ikeze za huwara risebeze. Ri khonu i sustain. So ntore eri shoka. Ko utola lendi. And lendi hape land reform. Hairi abele lendi. Di famu zete. Haba rishere leto na ridi sebedisi. Lendi hai sebedi sweke batu. Ba shebu wangara communities. Ba already ba sebeza nkata ba za timo. Ha ba sherelwe lendi ewe. Or ba kono ipidisa. Ha usike wa latuwa batu ba duzing. Ba sina interesti hulima. Ba kenywe kara di farm. Ha u kenywe batu already ba tletzing. Ba occupy le di kliniki. Ba occupy le di kolo. Ba occupy le di dumping site. A kenywe kara di farm tete nge ba sebe te ba tuswe. Enda riba tu fwafela di land. Riba tla land with water. Kena li kampaini eke ranang ya one woman one hectare. With water. Land with water. Riba tla liona Department of Rural Development. I ananele because rishloka land ya urejale. 
taba e etletseng ka rumitse ya gona ya hore di ganga di fail ha re di kolmaka re di occupy re le mama spala wa khutla hape a tla tlosa batho ka ra di ganga tseo which is wrong because the dumping site tseo di tlinwa ke rona because di pila di kolotsa bana ba gona di pila matlo a rona ha ona motha di hlokomelang immediately restart re di hlokomela re jala maspala sa liteng o tibela batho mo o re ba ba ka sebedisa di ganga tseo so re kopa re lokolelwe di ganga re di occupy and re fiwe di pampiri tse right ho ona di ganga tseo re khona o development thank you na ba tsa ditse ngkhone maga ditsela mane e batu ke dula le tenya maspar from 1965 ke dula mo ke na le dipampire tsa ke mathile ndi hopisa maspar a ka fela ha ho na ka gawe ke thotsi ene hona ke na bona se ke na le motse kae ke tlhutlo ya kae ha some people le ke yo ke mathile dipampire ke tsen ke ba tsa ho ire ka ke sa le motse ha ka ba nga ga ba futela ka je ene ha ona mmoki ya ke le jwetse bana ba suggestions or maybe uh maybe maybe it's a lair gang gang ekarisan somewhere because truly speaking we have been sitting into meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings and meetings just now any progress so currently i know for a fact uh reduce monana retro bua can't we challenge a bua from so many years lebon that the baba mbe runa nense remata lebona uh, most uh, I was suggesting something. Or truly speaking, Monana Reduci Monana is just the chosen keep a few balinka mona. And a but baba tantarol law. Baba ngatakatsile magazak in terms of the agenda yalzati. So untwene karatili horam chomoni eke shebe u kiba ita pele baro na monana. Uh, but there is a bang na wait side into it so na for the sake of someone supposed to benefit. They will come again after five years, if not maybe more, come ten years. So, how about by tapele baga before lona maybe leka zwa kahara muso 2014? Reads wait a referen referendum so that who we may kuto abato direct from bona not rebuwa chena na because. Baba ngabana ya ona access or mtlomo baka rebona ko TV o baka rutwa ko di radio njuto di load shedding sa rileng ka haratsona. I don't know. Mkhono bala people are crying. Rijalwa di tense. There's nothing, no progress. But so di baka. Something's supposed to be done. I don't know ki muso o fin. O san san ngoto ya malero na hore mamela. Es batu baba beyan di tulo. These people, they don't care about us. Eo yona tswane tsori ri buwe itoto baale. Yalebo.
Um, Dumelang, Libito ki prudence wahashanyani. Um, I strongly oppose the expropriation bill, meaning ki hanana leon. Ki tlubuwa mabaka aka obani ki hanana leona, but above that or beyond that, ki tlubuwa na hapelika proposed solutions or what I think can work. Pili ki kena tita bengta aka bana besu. Uh, I need to highlight something, that when the land is being expropriated without compensation, it means when, as Moahiwa country, you do not have ownership of this land. It will belong to Maspala. It will belong to the state. Therefore, it will state. Meaning, how can a miracle happen, and then Freedom Front wins the election? So you must know of this. Therefore, this expropriation So it's not for us. You will never title deed if this bill is Ki khale bana besu bantse batla ho rona re buwa ka the very same bill re lana ga ema hona mon ka ga se rena geng ko mongwa batho ba lafana ka submission ri emi ka ga yona holo in but till to date how so it's win ixi ho senya fela chelete ntso itse wa dijo this technology ntse itliswa mona re singetswa nako mabaka a etsang ke hanane le this bill number 1 Onani speaker said we learn to say property king. Property could be koroyaka, could be land, could be the building itself. As per the definition of this bill, haitiye who have expropriated. But longa lintu nyana yaka eki kaya tinyo. But longa batong li koloi nyana yaka ke zame tinyo. So it's not clear. This is why I'm saying I'm opposed to this bill. Number two, this bill goes against the, the constitution Yaruna. Section 25 clearly states for Harry Butler to amend the constitution. The reclamile raise a ing. Is in short cut here, but long years a hana juale. Kau zala kama ikuto Aruna. Ba ite kara butler refal fat. Ba satu refal lona. Kya kuta hape? Kya kuta hape ki hana na li this bill because it does not give me as mo ahi kapa as a black person li fat matong aga. Impa ifanaka yona to the state. Now here's my proposed solution. He proposed a hurry. The state has nazwal inanim over 44 million hectares of land. How we buy chemi steady is the cow refal fat. Habak habak kaleka those hectares of land and show can need to have at lafana kal fat. Number one. Number two proposed solution. The very same land reform and land restitution policies. How about the implemente kabo talo? Who bonds a political willingness? Who far but to lefati? But babo ona batleni le kadi limo limo. Baba to lefati labon kono babo na libon tete mo But however, they chose a selected few politicians who are connected. Baba far lefati laska fuwa ona gele but babo run. So let them start there. Haba kale kale fati ba naning lona. Haba kale kau implementa the processes, lidi policies. Seba di enteng bonazo hutlo fana kale fati. Hutlo mo gitla ba tepa. But until then, I still say this bill is scam. Thank you very much. Kono sasa kono. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentations and saying whatever that you feel. There were others who asked questions and there are others who have personal issues that are touching them. We've taken their, their, their personal uh, details. Um, maybe before I take it back to the chairperson, what I want to say is that um, you also have a right, like I said when I, I started, that um, you can go back to wherever you're coming from, form groups and discuss about this bill, and write your proposal and your concern in terms of what you were saying, 
but go through it slowly without the pressure of the five minutes, and then we're giving you at least two weeks, okay? And then you will send your written proposals to T. Chabalala, T-S, not T, M, M. Send your proposals to this email or nine. Now you have a screen in a bonnet. A screen in a Romunta City Nip to Melaguya Umorin Chabalala. E Emilia Kenai M Chabalala at GPL dot GOV dot ZA. Yonkin to Nibe Lapo Isi. In terms of what is it that you want this bill to look like? What is the process in Mamela? But Gabona Luci, Samel Luci, and Bill Mover, Ni Kulumega, Ni Saranisitoen, Bessene Chimelala. Chaperson, let me take it back to you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Mover, and indeed, we welcome all the inputs made. The unfortunate part is that as the table here, we are not supposed to respond to what you are saying. We are supposed to take it. Whether we like it, whether we don't like it, we have to take it. When you criticize government, you are part of government, so you are criticizing us. And whether we have to take it. It's 2023. Some of us came in 2019, and when we were speaking here, we were speaking about 1964, 1960. We don't have to like it, we don't have to agree with you, but we have to take it. And let me assure you, none of us here is angry. You have the right to say whatever you want to say to us. So we feel your frustrations, we feel your pain, so that when we go to the next level, we are able to tell them exactly how you were saying it. But if you're going to be nice because you're worried, hey, who's awkward, and it's not going to help you. So we appreciate the honesty. We appreciate how frank you were in terms of, of your deliberation. One thing that came out very strong, and I think this is what we are going to deliberate as a committee. There seemed to be, Member Masilena, there seemed to be a very thin line in terms of distinguishing between land expropriation and land claim. A very thin line. What we will need to do as a responsive committee seated here in front of you, is to take this thing further. It should not end here. We should take it further. And taking it further means we will write a letter to the National Portfolio Committee of Land Reform, Agriculture, and Rural Development. They come, they sit here, they listen to you when you speak about land claims. All this evidence that you have, say this, Mama Molin talk about municipality can approve house plans, but approve or a agent, be a mojo to lend us a high and so on, family art, it's totally out of order. It is wrong, and we will have to take it up as a committee on their behalf. We will have to fight for her, because clearly no, in the municipal, they have no appetite to listen to her, but they have got an interest in taking her money when she do the business, making building plans, and because I know they are not for free. To, to do that building plan does not come for free. She paid for those things. They approved the, the plans because no one else but the municipality approves these things. When everything has been said and done, when the house is there, they then tell her she must vacate the house because the land is not hers. Why did they approve all these things all along? Why did they allow her to pay for these things to, be, to happen for her and her family? Only to be told from 1965. Hence I'm saying we are, we are taking note of whatever that has been said and the good thing is that we are recording these things. This technology that has been criticized here, it helps us to record so that if there's anything that we, amongst ourselves, when we don't agree, when we fight amongst ourselves, we can quickly go back to the recordings and listen exactly what was said. Lastly, remember that seated here, we represent different political parties, ourselves as a committee. But when we are here, we are one thing and one thing only, which is how and legislature. But when we go back and deliberate on what you have been saying as we move around the province, we are going to take our political caps. We are going to fight there. Whether right or wrong, whether the, the expropriation is right, it's wrong, we are going to fight amongst ourselves in order to capture the mood and the essence of what people of Gauteng are saying. 
Because after everything has been said and done, this needs to be consolidated in, in favor or against, so that it then sent to the NCOP, so that they are then able to vote in parliament. And Member, member Mukhet will explain why we are here today. And someone mentioned that we came here and now we're coming again and so on and so forth. It's not, a, it's not because we don't take you serious. There are a number of challenges that were faced by the previous uh, 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 public engagement. Some of you would remember the most famous, and I normally use this example, of the expropriation debate was, was in Limpopo. And that Etera Lokota was famously captured crying, seated like this, when he was told where to get off. He was seated crying. And Julius Malema did not hold back. He went on and on to a point of that Telkota Navatao Tuber. Because this is a very emotional debate. If you are taking it for granted, it's okay. We can't tell you the seriousness of this thing. But we can imagine uh, uh, and that the Saint Bart, ne? Saint Brand, on a plus or minus 10 hectares of land. And tomorrow you say, no, bring, bring eight of that 10 hectares because you want to give to other people without no negotiation, no discussion, nothing. Some of you, we are saying you are from Everton. Everton that I know, it's in a little charter to the Gima Gima. Now close your eyes and imagine tomorrow we come and say, no, half, cut. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't matter to us. So this thing is two way. Don't look it in one way. We must look it as it is. Because there are, if you go about clip down, clip down has a big stance. Imagine if Utwa could clip down where they do the same to you. So the appeal that we're making is that you need to understand we are not angry and we can never be angry. We can't be angry when you tell us where to get off, but we are happy when we come to you and ask you to vote for us. It can't be. So as the same way we come to you and ask you to vote for us is the same way we're going to take this thing when you, are saying, when you talk to us. You have a right to be angry with us. We've got no problem with that. As long as there's that mutual respect in your anger, as, mo as long as there's that respect in your engagement, then we're happy. So let me hand over to Me Mukheti. She will then do what she knows. She will tell you what she's going to do. Me Mukheti. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Chairperson, I am so very happy to be here. I am so very happy to be here because uh, as you're speaking, you are also taking words uh, from uh, what I've also noted here. Uh, you also came up with a way forward. So mine is just to thank the honorable members for making time. I know that uh, but because this meeting was very important, uh, all of us are here today. Uh, the department, the, 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 the national department, which is a national department of public works for the presentation. Kilebo Heli, um, our legal uh, 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 unit, Ona Salusa Hori, Mulao Ona, Hobaning Rita, Huluna Gaona Hab, and then Abe Aiza, Ntongwea Bukoka, Aribonsa, the time frames. I think um, Member Nube Willa Buahor, Hona Leva Tubabang, Bailu Hori, maybe Bafila Hori, they wanted to say more. But you still need to, to go and meet. You can still meet as groups and then uh, craft your submissions and then read your email, go, um, that uh, email address in the MCSW mall. So, Joel Okahane lays at input I think uh, all of us agree, Hori. There's one thing that we agree, Hori. Reshaw Kalefa is sitting Umshaba wait, Tom you put to tell Utella and what is sitting sitting Umshaba wait, we sell we get. So I think that is what we are agreeing about, but the, all the inputs will be consolidated, not only Samona Fela, the area of Fela, because Rotloza Majolica Chaperson Abula, Rotlocross Crosser, the whole province, Rezamenza Rutla, what are the people saying about this uh, bill? And then they will then be consolidated. After it being consolidated, then the other processes will follow. Jolio Kahane, Mewaruna, wa legally and asalu sa di boxes ele horu hutlo eza hala e. And then I know that hunale me ailenga buwa habu kuku are udula fleting 
and then hunali dyspepsis hansi ena thewe unali arthritis and all that renali committee e bitswang human settlement ke na hana hore di official tsa rona bo khaya mmol ba tla khona hore re ba romelle ditletlebo tsa batho ba holo le di title di tse jwa so that le bone ha ba tla next time ba tla ka committee ya bone ba etse sho hore ntho tseo ba di consider hore eh hantse re a ha jwalo mohlomong hona le ntho re e re e re sa yetseng hantle ya hore ha re a ha maybe re tshwantse re kenya di lift if re tlo nka batho ba holo re ba re ba dudisa ko dim so maybe they need to look into uh, their their new plans for ba bona hore ba yetsa jwang issue ya ngkhono eh chairperson o buile ka yone le na ke ile ka fila hore ngkhono ka nete it's unfair but we will uh, have to follow it up le rona with the municipality to check out what is the problem about uh, the, 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 the issue. And then there's another lady who made a very important um, comments based on the legislation, a quote that those uh, clauses, as you were quoting them, as you were making some inputs, just know that they will be considered, they will be consolidated to make sure that um habili e consideriwa rea 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 it rea consider then there's one person who spoke about amakosi ne re bua le tshe hore we know that uh, land ka setho sa rona le fatsi le 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 controller ke magoshi so we will have a separate uh, engagement le magoshi it's not like we left them in the uh, out of the process we will be going and, and engage them and make sure that we also have their inputs. And then uh, there's a lady who was like, like Chair Nabuar Haras Honela Okwata, we are in Twenaki Skeme. They came here, it's not only here, there's another one, Oile Ngari Ke Khale Ba Atlamo. If Le Hopola Hantle, process yena ila yezua, pili, raya parlamente, ene hore, repasise mula uko parlamente, rosante reveli two thirds majority. So, kana ko ewu, Harzanga rabali on a two thirds majority. Our regakona or real fate ole mola uo. So we hope for this time uh, we will be able after the whole process has been uh, 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 finalized because highest halle fella mo highest halle lidi province in sending house of the two hair hotel table or handle retapa hurry this time mola uo na uta fit. So Eriki lebo hai before ke kuala. Okay, go power and touch and add your little morale. Go high, no sebe is a go high. Do not work when you take it home. Just make sure that uh, you just return it so that Rokono or Harry are going to play against the thing happy. Rokone re ready sebe this. Kilebo has a chava say, say, Saro Nahore. You make time, you came, you made your inputs, but you are saying you can still go back and meet uh, as the groups and then you can still do your, your submission. Jualoka a member Pindia Bulor Nali two weeks uh Horega submit that into the the comments is our Najal. Kilata Kirata Huleboha, the Huti says our chairperson or a quality meeting hand. Thank you, Chair back to you. A quick announcement, the meeting is officially closed. Just a quick announcement. Jumelan Baholo, Sanbonan Baholo, good uh, afternoon to everybody. Lunch is served at the back. Uh, can you please prioritize those people who are disabled? Nekekopa le prioritize mbatoba kovetse hile ngale Thank you. Lunch is served.